uh, theory of the good life is kind of hovered between pleasure and duty. Would you repeat that? Uh, yes, he's saying that uh, uh, setting a goal uh, for your life is more important than the uh, the happiness uh, well, I think factor. We are primarily teleological creatures. Yeah, teleological. Right. Search for purpose. Yes, and search the for purpose. To find purpose mm -hmm. is probably the most important value that I subscribe to, and I suspect that you look at the only problem no. is that no, Hitler no, probably thought that he had found his purpose. Well, no doubt did, right. Yeah. 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 Ye
be one which when you had mastered, you would master this whole business of setting goals and pursuing them and that sort of thing. Right. Great. So, sure, okay. All right. You're coming dangerously close to agreeing with the notion that, that you need a balanced life. <laughs> Not a, a life of excellence or pursuit in only one direction, but a balanced life. Well, but the point is that, the, that this balance is part of being excellent, right? I mean, it's the unbalanced life which is not excellent, right? Yes. Right? So, I mean, um, uh, uh, sure, I mean, uh, balance has got to be part of it, and that's something that the art of living would, would try to determine. Admittedly, you know, there's no cut-and-dried formula for determining this. It's a, it's a judgment call. But the person who is practiced in this art presumably would be sort of expert in making those judgment calls. So then if we go back to some of your examples, Paul and Sheila, Sheila who did the great works with the uh, yeah. native rights at the expense of having a family and all of that, her, her life supposedly was going to be uh, um, what the more admirable compared well, it was more to Paul, admirable than Paul yeah right but it's not balanced Paul's was balanced well I, you've well, got to I mean I don't think balance means that you you have to uh, you know give some play to all the possible goods in life right this reminds me of of Plato's description of what he calls the, the democratic man. Um, he thinks that uh, every uh, object of desire should have its place in, in his life. And so, you know, he devotes one day to improving his health, another day to making himself into a philosopher, another day to pr practicing military skills, another, you know. I mean, um, this, uh, this is ridiculous. That's not what balance means. Right. I mean, balance is is um, when when you have a set of of admirable and worthwhile goals, it's pursuing them in such a way that um, they don't it, it, one doesn't interfere with the other too much. Right. That they all yeah. there's going to be a limited set of goals. Right. And you want to make sure that all of them all of this limited set get a place. And then you also have to think about yourself, your energies, your health, etc. And I mean, how much can you put out with, uh, with regard to these things? Sometimes, for example, with Maud Barlow, I just sometimes think that she's going overboard a bit, right? I mean, uh, because I really wonder whether she's not stressing herself, her uh, health out too much on this. So um, that's, that's what I meant by, uh, by balance, right? It's not um, that you, I mean, it's perfectly all right to totally forget about family life and that sort of thing, having a family and all that. Um, uh, you don't, I don't think you need that for, to lead an excellent life. Um, um, so you don't have to include that in. I mean, most people might very well want to, but it's not a necessary element. Do you want to push that a little bit? I sense you do. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> okay, so I'm here's a question. Yeah. Do you not need to have connectedness to other human beings, be it family or friend, or mm -hmm. even foe? Yeah. You still have to have some kind of connectedness with mm -hmm. other humans. You want to come back to the last cafe of this series, okay. because we're going to talk about that, <laughs> that very question, right? My remarks may not be that Socratic, but I thought I would be remiss in not at least sharing my experience, which is rather relevant, I hope, to uh, the context of our dialogue here this afternoon. I was diagnosed with leukemia 11 years ago. Do I look like I have leukemia? <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, needless to say, that was a major catharsis. And... Uh, an opportunity to examine the human condition and my own circumstances. And being a management consultant in research and uh, corporate communications and all that kind of thing, 
I decided to do some research in these areas. And I've developed my own life philosophy, if you will. Some of it may be Socratic, and you know, you can integrate whatever you want into whatever the design of your particular model that you choose to live by. And I could go on for a long time, and I, that's not my intent, but I will summarize for you what I use as a guide to enable me to live the kind of life that we're talking about. And by the way, it's subject for dialogue and interpretation and much more extended discourse than the elements I'm going to identify. Here we go. Slow down. <laughs> Talk less. Stay open. Take action. Be patient. Forgive to be happy. <laughs> that is certainly a good note to close on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, just a couple things. On, um, on the 21st, Friday, the 21st of January, uh, Daniel Coleman will be giving the uh, Augustanus Distinguished okay. Lecture in which he is going to speak about reading beyond the book, the reader as public intellectual. And this will be uh, at 3.30 in the Humanities Center, L3. That's 3.30 on Friday the 21st of January and then the 22nd of January, the Saturday, he will be here with us uh, looking at the Via Activa and the Via Contemplativa. So, uh, thank you for coming. Thank you for uh, thinking out loud and thinking internally as well. And we look forward to seeing you again. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Mark. And to Mark. And to Steve's. Ooh.